Hi, hello, and welcome. My name is Heather. This is Miss Finn. And this is the special holiday episode of Nice People. Normally here on Nice People, we talk about the kinds of things nice people don't talk about. Mental illness, trauma, shitty people. But this episode isn't going to be like that. Instead, we're just going to hang out, decorate some cookies, try out a few vegetarian loaves, and try to wrap a present like they do in Japanese department stores. Does that sound good, Finn? Okay, let's go. Welcome to the kitchen. First things first, the chocolate starfish is my man Fred Durst. We need to make some cookies. We're gonna use some pre-made ones. As much as I would have liked to have made the cookies from scratch, I tend to get a little overly ambitious and burn out before completing a task. Also, I still managed to mess these ones up. While those are cooking, I'm gonna cut to the footage I filmed last week of making the tofurkey loaf, because two loaves in one day is way too much. Oddly enough, the tofurkey loaf didn't come with any cooking instructions. So I used a recipe that I got off of ilovevegan.com, which I will link below. And I figured that the best way to compare the two loaves would be to prepare them the exact same way. So that's what I'm gonna do with the garden loaf as well. But for now, here's the tofurkey loaf. Once again, I just wanna thank Brittany and William at ilovevegan.com for this recipe, because without it, I would have no clue how to cook a tofurkey roast. The recipe calls for one medium sweet potato peeled and chopped, one to two carrots peeled and chopped, and six to 10 creamer potatoes halved. I also added half an onion, but that's totally optional. For the base, you're gonna need three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of maple syrup, one clove of garlic, minced, and one and a half teaspoons each of fresh chopped thyme, oregano, sage, and rosemary. I just kind of eyeballed it as far as the measurements, and mine turned out fine. First, you're gonna to want to prepare your baste and then set that aside. Next, you wanna add all of your vegetables and then cover it with only half of the baste. We're gonna save the other half for later on in the cooking process. Make sure your vegetables are nice and covered in the baste. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make room in the center of your baking dish for the tofurkey roast and then put down some parchment paper to separate the roast from the vegetables. After that, you're gonna set your loaf there in the center, and then I made the mistake of putting the other half of the baste on now, but you're supposed to save it until the end. Then you're gonna wanna cover that and put that in the oven at 350 for one hour. After one hour, you're gonna wanna check for doneness. I didn't have a thermometer to check the internal temperature, but I just got the feeling it was done. However, the recipe calls for cooking it for an additional 20 minutes with that baste on top. Nah. So apparently it's fine to eat raw cookie dough now. Ooh, true story. When I was, I wanna say 14, I got salmonella poisoning from raw cookie dough. Yeah. I was so sick that I actually wished that I would die. Man, what is it about cookie dough? Probably that it's just sugar and butter. All right, guys, I goofed. Take a look at that. Here's what went wrong. Last week, I made a batch of sugar cookies using the like pre-portioned ones that you put on the baking sheet and cook. And with those ones, I was able to fit 12 on a cookie sheet. This time I cut them from a cookie dough log and they're considerably larger. And even though I read on the package that they needed to be spaced two inches apart, just went right over my head. And I put 12 on that sheet too. But that's okay. We're just gonna roll with it. Let's move on. I prepared the garden loaf in the same way that I did the tofurkey one. 
This time I prepped things ahead of time, so it went a little faster. The Gardein loaf is about twice as long as the Tofurky one, and it cooks for 20 minutes longer than the Tofurky loaf did. Be sure to stick around until the end when I taste test both of them and give you my opinion as to which one is the best. Welcome to the cookie decorating station. I'm trying out a number of new things for this, including a second camera angle, hence that guy in the frame. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it works out. Also, I'm really hoping that having the microphone that far away from me will end up working out. I haven't done a test run with it, so putting all our eggs in one basket. Super smart. So to decorate, I've got some red, green, blue, and white frosting, along with some shredded coconut. I've got some different colored sprinkles, white and red icing. And I have some red and green icing as well, but um, just found out that uh, you need a microwave in order to get these ready, so that's not gonna happen. Scott doesn't have a microwave. Actually, you know what? Let's see what this is like. Just for the shoot of it. Maybe it doesn't actually need to be warmed up. Oh. That seems fine. So okay, we're still gonna use the green. Hopefully I don't regret that. Okay, what are we doing first? I'll put my inspiration picture up here for reference. I don't know how this is gonna go. I doubt my creations will be on anyone's Pinterest board, but that's okay. We're having a good time. I like to tell people we're having a good time. Let's try the snowflake first. I was the type of kid who always had a million questions about everything. And honestly, I'm still like that today. But today, I have the luxury of the internet and the ability to answer all of my questions. Okay, why does this already look like ass? I know I'm out here acting like I'm cool being all casual with the cookies, but I at least want to make an effort, you know? Where was I? Oh right, my questions. As we decorate some cookies, I'm gonna share with you guys some of the questions I've had recently and their answers like some of the rumors and bizarre lies we were told in childhood, and some other interesting factoids, and also some things that I am way too old to have just now learned. Let's start with the childhood rumors and lies. Childhood lie number one, pee turns blue in swimming pools. Yeah, that's a lie. Apparently there is no chemical that changes color when it comes into contact with urine. Still shocking to me. Childhood lie number two. You must wait 30 minutes after eating before swimming, otherwise you will die. Yeah, that's not true. And I was even trying to think of why, like what reasoning there was. I know you guys have heard this one too, so let me know in the comments the consequences that you were told would happen if you swam within 30 minutes of eating. Lie number three. There is not some kind of invisible ink on fire alarm handles. Yeah, did you guys hear that one too? I don't know how I ever came to hear this one, but I know I'm not the only one. The lie was something to the effect of, don't pull a fire alarm if there isn't a fire because there's an invisible ink on it and authorities can find out who pulled the fire alarm using that. Uh, shoot. Well, we'll do this one with coconut. I don't really care for that. I don't think I even really meant to do that one with coconut, but yeah. Childhood lie number four, no free Tootsie Pops. Do you guys remember being told in childhood that you should save Tootsie Pop wrappers that have the Indian shooting a star because you can get a free Tootsie Pop with them. Yeah, also not true. An 
actually Tootsie, the maker of Tootsie Pops, addresses this rumor on their website, saying that they have no idea how that started and it's not something that they've ever honored and that the Indian shooting a star appears just as much as all of the other designs. I know that there are lots of other ones that I have not mentioned, so let me know in the comments some of the ones that I've missed. Let's try sprinkles with this one. Oh. Yes. Sprinkles are much better. What do we think? Coconut or sprinkles? I think the sprinkles look better. Can you guys hear Finn snoring in the background? I hope in this coming year I'm able to get a new camera so I don't have to record things on my phone, but it's working for now. What do we want to try this time? Let's try a Santa. Now, we have this red sparkle gel. We have a red sparkle gel. We also have the the red cookie icing counterpart to the green one. And I also have red frosting. Which one should we do? Oh. Not the most appetizing. Let's try it out. What's next on our list? Ooh. So I've lived in the Pacific Northwest for most of my life. And every year, Right now it's escaping me what time of year this usually is. Probably the summer. It's very common to track these little things everywhere, into your car, usually into the entryway of your home. I'm used to seeing them every year, but didn't really think about what they were or where they came from. Until, uh, let me get that lined up. I swear to God, this was just like a month ago. I picked one up and really looked at it and realized they're baby pine cones. Why did I only just now figure that out? Okay, so this frosting is quite runny. Hmm. How do we feel about this, guys? And actually, I take that back. They're not baby pine cones. They are pollen cones. I lived in the Pacific Northwest for 33 years. Only just now realize what those are. Okay, so I've got white frosting. We also have the cookie icing, and I'm trying to decide how I want to do the beard. Mm, I feel like I'm gonna regret this. Let's try it with the frosting. Okay guys, this next one is so dumb and so embarrassing. But when I say that this revelation was a paradigm shift for me, I'm not exaggerating. A few months ago, I was just over here hanging out with my boyfriend and his roommate. And I don't recall how this came up, but they dropped the bombshell on me that when guys or people with penises sit on the toilet to do their business, they tuck their D and B's into the toilet bowl. At first, I genuinely thought they were messing with me. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, one of those. But then between their bouts of laughter, they asked me things like, well, where do you think we put it? And I realized I haven't really thought about it. Never crossed my mind. And before you ask, the answer is no. I don't hang out in the bathroom while my boyfriend does his business. I want this coconut to stay on here. So I'm gonna kind of smush it into the frosting. I'm not really a fan of how this red icing has turned out. Where was I? Right, D&B's in the bowl. 
ever since hearing this earth-shattering revelation, there's been a few times where I've heard confirmation of this. For instance, the other day, Scott and I were listening to the 1,000th episode of the Joe Rogan Experience. I don't like my dick inside the toilet. Right. <laughs> Somebody's gonna suck your dick and all of a sudden they're sucking the toilet. Apparently the evidence has been around me the entire time and I just didn't notice. I'm attempting to make some little blue eyeballs using the cap to the white icing. Oh God. <laughs> the Rock, D&B in the bowl. Vladimir Putin, D&B in the bowl. Donald Trump, D&B in the bowl. This has so many implications for us, at least some of us, because I have rarely, rarely ever seen a man's toilet be clean and definitely not clean enough to have their bits touching it and then going somewhere else. Somebody's gonna suck your dick and all of a sudden they're sucking the toilet. Here's our Santa. So that one didn't turn out the best, but that's okay. What should we try next? I thought I was gonna try a Christmas tree with this green icing, but seeing how the red turned out, yeah, clearly that won't work. My inspiration ideas really required that I had some precision with my icing, which I don't have. I can tell I have a hair caught in one of my lashes. No, we're good. Let's see if we can knock out a peppermint one. So I'm not one of those people that knows a lot about one subject, but I do have a lot of mostly useless facts filling up my brain, some of which I'm going to share with you now. Thank me later if you end up on a game show. Scott and I recently binge watched all of the seasons of Narcos on Netflix. And I've seen a lot of cocaine use in movies and TV shows, as I'm sure you have as well. And I've never really thought about that too much. I think at most I just thought it was some movie magic that made it seem like they were snorting something. But it wasn't until watching Narcos that it dawned on me, the actors are really snorting something. So that begs the question, what are they snorting? Prop cocaine is usually a vitamin B derivative called inositol. And apparently it works really well because it absorbs easily into the sinuses and doesn't affect vocal cords. And apparently shitty cocaine oftentimes is cut with inositol. Okay, okay, what is happening with our peppermint? Where did I go wrong? I swear I really am trying. Side note, what the f was up with El Chapo's wanted poster? Scott and I died laughing when that came up on the screen. I tried to find out if that was the real wanted poster for El Chapo, and I couldn't find anything on it, so. If you know the answer to that, be sure to let us know in the comments. Should I even start in on another cookie? Where's the, no, I got three minutes. What are we gonna try next, guys? So I've cooked the roast for an hour and 20 minutes covered, and then it says to uncover it and cook for another 20 to 25 minutes. So just went and did that. And then also went and made some orange frosting. Let's see if we can make some little carrot noses on some snowmen. Oh, and I grabbed a flosser so I could use the, the tip of it possibly to make some stuff. I don't really know. This isn't going as well as I thought it would. A few months ago, Scott and I were playing GTA 5. We were doing one of the missions in the submersive vehicle and accidentally ran into a whale and it died instantly. And after it died, it just immediately sank to the bottom of the ocean floor. And that got me wondering, what does happen to whales when they die? Like, do they sink right away? Do they float up to the top like dead fish? 
Do they stay suspended in whatever depth they died in? I didn't know. Turns out that once decomposition is underway, the whale's body can fill up with gases and float to the surface where it'll be scavenged by seagulls and other birds. But eventually it will sink to the bottom of the ocean floor and support an entire ecosystem for up to 200 years. Yeah, they're called whale falls. Mind blowing. Do we want to try coconut on this one? Yes, we do. Have any of you guys been paying attention to AI generated art lately? This one isn't really a fact, but just something interesting. Really fascinating subject. A lot of the pieces that I've seen are really cool. And in fact, one of them won an award at the Colorado State Fair, which a lot of people were big mad about that one. What am I gonna use for the eyes and the buttons on the snowman? He's not gonna have them. So yeah, some of the pieces that I've seen are really cool but some of them are downright disturbing. In fact, I don't even wanna show them in this video. Nightmare Expo did a really cool video about it and about this experiment that was done with them, which I highly recommend. I'll put a link to that in the description. It is dark though, so if you want a more lighthearted one, I'll also put a link to a video that Cody Co. did on it. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. Oh, so this, this is supposed to be a scarf. Oh, and it looks like I've got to change the battery in this camera. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and finish the snowman. In my early days of being a renter, I thought I'd be super responsible and get a renter's insurance policy. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so we get earthquakes and have active volcanoes. So, you know, better to be safe than sorry. How am I gonna do this nose? Here's our uh, snowman. Maybe it'll be better if we give it some eyes. I don't even know what color of eyes to give it. Where was I? Oh right, renter's insurance. I'm one of those people that actually does read those giant stacks of paper that you get with contracts, insurance policies, etc. And so I had just gotten this renter's insurance policy and uh, imagine my surprise when I saw that uh, I wasn't covered for a little thing they called Acts of God. And in fact, most standard homeowners insurance policies also do not cover Acts of God. Hmm, okay, that didn't really help too much. Oh! Get on there. So what is an act of God, you might be asking? Well, generally speaking, they are disastrous events outside of human control. So things like tornadoes, hurricanes, lightning strikes, etc. Natural disasters, basically. Except they have this other little group of natural disasters that they call acts of God. Things like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and floods. They're all natural disasters. But for some reason, they're getting away with designating some of them as acts of God. And somehow that justifies them not covering them. How were they getting away with this acts of God shit? It's 2022. We're back. Just took the Gardein roast out of the oven. 
Let's uh, try to decorate a few more cookies, shall we? What should we try next? I have an idea. So years ago, my first job, I had a customer whose real name was Michael Myers. Yes, like in the Halloween movies. For some reason I was thinking about him the other day and about how it must suck to have either the same name as a really famous person or to have a really infamous last name like Dahmer, Kaczynski, Epstein. And that got me wondering, are there any Hitlers left? So decided to see what I could find. And according to a 2017 US Today story, in the 2010 census, there were fewer than 100 people with that name. Now they said that name. I'm not sure if they mean Hitler or if they mean Adolf Hitler, because they were kind of talking about both. Okay, tried to uh, make a tree. Yeah, it's, it's not the greatest. And according to that 2010 census, there were 133 people who still had the last name Hitler, but they spelled it with two T's. Still though, and about 10 other people in the US appear to have the first and last name Adolf Hitler. And I would really like to know if that's the name they were given at birth by their shitty parents, or if they themselves changed it to Adolf Hitler. Either way, what the hell are they doing with their lives? Okay, I need to uh, cleanse the palate with an easy one. We're gonna do another snowflake. So for some reason, I went on to talk about Hitler for way too long. So instead of subjecting you to that, I'll just give you a little preview of what I was doing with the cookie. Sorry about that. Did you guys know that Baseball Hall of Famer Randy the Big Unit Johnson now runs a studio specializing in wildlife travel and concert photography? Yeah, dude's a photographer now. Did you guys know you're supposed to toast the bread first when making French toast? Been doing that wrong my entire life. Gonna have to try that out soon though. Maybe I'll make French toast in a future video. I've mentioned before that I actually lived in Germany for a couple of years, about a decade ago. And despite the fact that I don't, don't speak, speak German, German and I'm also a vegetarian, meanwhile, Germany is like the land of meat covered meat, I loved living there. Loved it. If given the chance, I'd probably move back there, honestly. One of the things that I really enjoyed about living there was how old everything is. Like when visiting landmarks, I was often struck by just how accessible they are to the public because we could never have that in the United States. Anything that old and valuable would undoubtedly be trashed by the public. Let's just try to make a tree out of green frosting, shall we? One of the places I visited was the Black Gate in Trier, which was built by the Romans in the second century AD. And you can walk right up to it. It's just out in the open. Same with places like the Cologne Cathedral. I mean, that thing's like, I don't know, almost 800 years old. I also loved going to all of the castles. There are castles everywhere, everywhere in Germany. There was even one like 15 minutes from where we lived. And for some reason at this point, I started talking about Dachau. Sorry about that. We'll just skip over that part. Eat your heart out, Julie child. I got Miss Finn while I was living in Germany. Have I told you guys the story of how she got her name? So when I was a teenager, we got a pug named Evie and pretty much solidified for me that um, I needed a pug in my life at all times. When I moved to Germany, I was very isolated and alone and had a lot of time on my hands. And I'd been wanting to get a dog for a while, but I knew I really wanted a pug. And it wasn't easy, actually, for me to find one over there. It's probably different now, but like, I found a couple of different pug breeders in Germany, but 
they were kind of scattered all over the place and I never really got too far with working out, you know, actually getting a pug from one of these breeders. And I was kind of friendly with a few of the military wives and they knew that I really wanted a pug. And one of them worked at the bank on post. And one day, this wife sends me a text saying that one of her regular customers just had a litter of pugs and that they were for sale. Should we put, yeah, yeah, let's put some red sprinkles on it. Let's, let's jazz it up. So I got this lady's email address and emailed her. She didn't really speak a lot of English and I didn't speak any German, so I had to email so I could translate. So we're emailing back and forth and the pugs weren't ready to leave home yet. So there was a couple of weeks there where I was just waiting for my pug to be ready to be picked up. By the time I got a hold of this lady, most of the pugs were already taken, but there were two or three left, I think three. And so she sent me a picture of them and asked me, you know, which one I wanted. And at that time, I was really into Adventure Time, which, you know, Jake the dog, Finn the human, and the dog in the show is a pug. So my plan was to get one of the boys and name him Jake. So I picked out the one that I wanted and emailed her back and she was like, okay, great. I will, you know, take him off the market and you can come and pick him up. And I think it was like three weeks. So for three weeks now, I'm envisioning having this pug that I had picked out, a male, and his name was gonna be Jake, and was just super excited for that. Well, finally, the day comes around. I gotta show you guys. <laughs> so I was attempting to make a snowy landscape with a snowman. I don't know how it came out looking like a dick, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, where was I? Oh, right. So, the day finally comes around for us to go and pick up Jake. And the lady met us outside, and as we were walking into her house, she says something to the effect of, I've saved the girl for you just like you wanted. I'm like... Okay, I know that there's a language barrier here, but it seemed pretty clear, especially since I picked out a specific one from a photo, that I wanted one of the males. So I was a little disappointed, but I didn't really have much time to think about it. This was happening as we're walking into her home. And she has me go and sit down and says, okay, I'm gonna bring her out to you. So I sit in a chair at her kitchen table and she goes and opens a door that led into, I, I don't know, I think it was her garage or something. I don't really know. I am trying to make a nose. Oh my lord. These cookies are cursed. <sighs> I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I uh, keep this one? Moving on. So anyway, I go and I sit down at the table and she goes over to, I think it must have been like her garage where she had all of these pugs. And she opens the door and the most precious little pug puppy comes trotting out, her little ears bouncing, and comes right to me and you know puts her little paws up on my leg like she wants to get in my lap. And oh, my heart melted, melted. So I scooped her up. I was already in love with her. Did not care about the boy pug anymore. So at this point, didn't even care that I wasn't getting a boy. And even though I could have still named her Jake, I had just, I'd had it already in my head that 
I was getting a boy and was gonna name him Jake and it just didn't feel right to give her the same name. So I just thought, okay, whatever. I'll just name her Finn, like the other character on Adventure Time. And then for some reason, my ex-husband always called her Miss Finn, always. Somehow that just stuck. So yeah, that's the story of how she got her name. I think I'm gonna call that good with the cookies, at least for now, because we've still gotta wrap a gift. So let's move on to that. Hello and welcome back. I'm sure by now you've seen videos of gift wrapping in Japanese department stores. It is so satisfying. I've always wanted to try it. And now I have a gift and some paper and we're gonna give it a shot. I am going off of this gift wrapping in Japan tutorial by Jenny W. Chan Origami Tree. There's a link in the description if you would like to follow it as well. Now before we get to wrapping the gift, we have to figure out the height and also the length of the wrapping paper that we'll be using. So in order to figure out the height, you're gonna place the gift on the lower left hand corner like this. Count to four. So this is gonna be one, two, three, and four. And now to figure out the length, you're going to rotate it like that and then count to five. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. So now that we know our wrapping paper is the perfect size, we're going to flip it over so the color side is facing down. I don't have scissors. Failure to prepare is preparing to fail. So now that we know our wrapping paper is the perfect size, we're going to flip it over so the color side is facing down towards the table. And then we're going to imagine a line from the upper right hand corner to the bottom left hand corner right over here. And you're going to place your gift on that diagonal line. Fold it over, and as long as it covers the gift, that means it's going to fit. So then what you want to do is you want to take this corner over here on the lower left, and you're going to fold it up and then once you have that in place, you're going to push inwards with your index finger and also your middle finger on your left hand. So you're gonna push inwards along the side of the gift, just like that. Then you're going to push inwards on the side over here and then you're going to pull this flap upwards. You're going to take the entire flap and fold it over to the right side, just like that. And next we're gonna focus on the entirety of the left side here. And then you're going to rotate it again. And I am pulling up and just straight up like that. And once I have that alignment, I'm going to fold the entire thing over to the left side and then pull up so that this part aligns. And once you have that, you're going to fold everything over just like this. And then you have a little bit of a mess over here, but that is okay. You're gonna be able to fix that later on. You're going to take this and fold it along the diagonal. And that includes any flaps that are underneath as well. Now we're going to fold it the opposite way and then fold it down and then take this flap, fold it in and then fold the entire thing back down again. And if you were holding the gift down the entire time, this would be your first and only trip of tape. And now your gift is perfectly wrapped and you also have a little slot right here where you can put in a card. gonna call that good. Oh, no. <laughs>
know what? Something that she said now has this stuck in my head. There's some horrors in this house. 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 I said certified freak. Seven days a week. There's some horrors in this house. Wet ass P word. Make that pull out game weak. Yeah. 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 Okay guys, moment of truth. We are trying the Tofurky Roast. So I can definitely say that this isn't tough. It's actually quite soft. It's just this knife really sucks. It was a lot like what I was expecting. I'm very familiar with Tofurky's products and it had essentially the same texture as their kielbasa. It wasn't dry or anything, good consistency. Not as salty as I was expecting, which is good. It doesn't taste like turkey, but it has a very savory, umami flavor to it that I think would go great with any Thanksgiving or Christmas meal. I don't have anything to compare it to. So on a rating of one to 10, I think I'm gonna give the Tofurky an eight out of 10. Now it's time to taste test the Gardein Turkey Loaf. One advantage that this Gardein Turkey Loaf has is that they've put the gravy in two different packets. I really like that idea because that means I can have essentially fresh gravy when I have leftovers. The Tofurky loaf didn't do that. By the way, this I Love Vegan recipe with the potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, and then I added onions, top notch. Highly recommend. I guess I can bring the microphone over to me. This is a tough one. First of all, I've already said that I really like that the Gardein loaf has two separate packets of gravy so that you can heat it up for leftovers. I do really like the breading on the outside of it. It's nice and crispy and just mixes it up a little. The Tofurky loaf didn't have any kind of breading. It was just a, a very smooth slab. I also prefer the texture of the Gardein loaf. It's very, um, almost like chicken, like a really moist chicken. However, I don't think it's as flavorful as the Tofurky loaf. Now, if I had to choose between the two, I'm gonna go with the Gardein loaf. I know that initially I said that the Tofurky one didn't seem overly salty. I don't know where I got that from. It was pretty damn salty. But again, like, it's still good. Like, if, if the Gardein loaf wasn't an option, I would be perfectly fine getting the Tofurky one. But if I had to choose between the two, and of the two that I think non-vegetarians would be most happy with, I'm going to go with the Gardein. You have... Well, guys, I think that does it for this video. I hope you all have a great weekend, whether you celebrate Christmas or not. And Finn and I will be seeing you soon in the next video. Say goodbye, Finn. 
Okay, bye.